This is Major League Wrestling's World Heavyweight Champion, The Professional, Low Key, and you are watching Ambi. Hey everyone, it's Alicia too, and I would like to welcome you to my interview with Loki. Hello. Hi, how are you? I'm fantastic. How are you doing? I'm doing quite well. It's, uh, it's been seven years since I've been here, mm -hmm. so it's good to be back. And by here he means Canada, as we are here at Destiny Wrestling, so welcome back. Yes, ma'am. And just speaking to years, I have to say congratulations, because mm -hmm. you just gave this incredible and super inspirational speech to everyone here at Destiny Wrestling. <laughs> and within that speech, you mentioned how in three days, just three days away, it marks 20 years for you as a pro mm -hmm. in this crazy industry. Yeah, it's uh, October 10th, 1998 was my first professional bout. And uh, the reason why I take pride in that is because in the past, there was a structure that we had to adhere to in order to become a professional wrestler. You had to be sponsored by a school or, or graduate from a school, and then you had to go through the New York State Athletic Commission, and you had to go through their testing in order to be officially licensed. So different world, different time. <laughs> I had to do all of that, and it's been a long time since. When you think back to 20 years ago, what are some of the first things that come to mind for you? Some of the first things that come to mind from 20 years back is just the the growing with the people that I began with. Um, I'm very private and the people that I've had around me throughout my career are pretty much the same people that I've had around me since the beginning. Um, I'm, <laughs> and I'm not necessarily the most social person, but uh, I do stick with my, my core group of people. Okay. Well, something I love that you posted recently was something about New York slang and how everything <laughs> can be pretty much just asked, you, you good? good? <laughs> you good. Is that really just something that's been picked up on? You're like, that is completely, completely correct. You good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's uh, just, uh, you know, regional language for uh, New York City, but more, more so the, the Northeast because it's not just New York. Philly has it. New Jersey has it. Even uh, moving into Connecticut and uh, some other areas, but yeah, it's more of a Northeast thing. What's some other New York slang you could teach, not just me, but the viewers at home watching? <laughs> Dead ass. Dead ass is more like, um, if somebody's enthusiastic about saying something, they're mm -hmm. like, yo, dead ass, I saw that right <laughs> there. <laughs> Like, it's more like, seriously, it, you know, it's, yeah. it's an emphatic declaration as to something was for certain to have occurred. Okay. So that's, uh, I guess, my, my dictionary <laughs> definition. It's an interesting it. choice of words to put yeah. together, but yeah. hey, if it works, right? Hey, it, you'll see it in play in New York. <laughs> well, very soon you're going to actually be at MLW in Chicago. Yes, ma'am. Which is super cool. But, of course, mm -hmm. we're talking about New York, and there's that infamous battle of pizza when it comes to yes. New York <clears> and <throat> Chicago. So I have to ask you. What do you genuinely feel is better? Well, I'm born and raised in Brooklyn, so mm -hmm. I do have home field advantage, and I do have to stay loyal. And everywhere else that I have gone, the consensus is the same. New York pizza is the best. Oh, okay. I don't know if you're going to maybe differ there a little bit. or You may hope, but <laughs> i gotta, I got to be honest. Sorry. Okay. Don't need to apologize. <laughs> I mean, I like both. I mean, pizza... Pizza's both pizza. spots pretty good. I mean, it's pizza. <laughs> well, you were trained by Homicide and yes. Kettner. Now, mm -hmm. I know from Homicide, you learned a lot <clears throat> in the yes. ring. But when it comes to Kettner, you said it was almost a little bit more important because he taught you the business side. Yes. So for you, why do you kind of feel like business edges out? I don't want to say edges out talent because both are equally important. Mm -hmm. But to you, why did that stand out so much? The reason it stood out training with Jim Kettner more so than other people was because the physical part is the easy part. You're based off of your effort, your repetition. That's easy, anybody can do that. The thinking is the problem. Not everyone is mentally capable, or excuse me, mentally ad adept in order to use the information that's been shared, apply it, and elaborate upon it. Kettner knew I was more cerebral than anybody else around me. And not in a sense like I'm this highly intellectual person, but I paid attention. And I learn extremely fast, and I know how to apply things really fast because I'm not really speaking a lot. I'm absorbing everything the same way that all of us would as a kid. So that's the way I've continued to learn, uninhibited, so I learn a lot faster. I have a, a faster turnaround for me to actually use the information mm -hmm. that I'm learning. And then on top of that, because I'm physically, I've put in that much work, I can adapt it rather well. So dealing with Kettner, 
it was more of mental preparation in order to enter this field at the highest level. And because of that, because of that mental preparation, I've lasted longer than most people in my, my generation. I'm saying, you know, speaking to lasting longer, you're definitely known for your suits and your suits <laughs> in the ring. That's been going on for a bit now. And I, I, I love it because you always look so sharp when you're in there. Like well, you always you. mean business, just circling things back to business. Yes. But the first time you did that was in Japan as part mm-hmm. of a silent protest. Is that yes. true? Yes, it was a silent protest against New Japan Pro Wrestling for um, what would be seen as unethical business tactic, where it was shown to me that money was more valuable than the the safety or even just the people that helped build the company and it was in protest of wrestling near Fukushima which I had already done my research both in the country and outside of the country in order to make it an intelligent uh, position uh, before I made my argument and then when I put my foot down um, they wanted me to stay at the hotel just to pass off uh, me not going to the show, which I I told him it doesn't make any sense because no one's going to buy that I'm sick. No one's going to buy why is he not here when I'm in the the IWGP junior champion. So they're going to be wondering why. They gave some excuse as to that I was sick, but I knew that that didn't make any sense because everybody can see how physically in shape I was and I was Mm -hmm. well. Um, But they just wanted something to cover it so that they can move past that situation. And... um, for me, it was just unethical. You know, I, my protest was for safety. It wasn't about money. It wasn't about television. I was told if I couldn't make Fukushima the following tour, which would be in February, I would be scrapped for the whole year. So you want to strong arm me when I've sacrificed my body just like the rest of those men and women who work for your company, and you're still telling me that it doesn't matter. So to me, that's the business side that most people are never aware of. Mm-hmm. I've been a- around it and aware of it for a long time, so it doesn't affect me the same way, especially with Kettner mentally preparing me the way that he had. And I can see things far in advance more so than most people, and it's because I know how to put things together rather well. And I saw all of it coming, but it was because I'm the odd man out. I always stand up for myself. I always stand up for what's right, even if it's unpopular, and I'm not afraid of anybody. So I think that's what really upsets a lot of people because I'm not showing respect to their position of authority, but even more so, I'm creating an argument that could have that could carry heavy influence on the rest of the people there, and that's what upset me the most because they told me stay at the hotel, but please don't tell the others. So you're telling me that you don't want me to express my concerns over safety for the wrestlers, and even more so for the foreign wrestlers, which are my guys. Mm-hmm. I have to take care of them, and you're telling me to stay shut but they're okay to go to that that danger zone. Okay, so in January, I knew my last match would be at the Tokyo Dome. And before we went to the Dome, me and MVP, we went to uh, uh, Akihabara, and we went and started shopping around for stuff, and that's where I got my guns. And uh, when I did the entrance for uh, for Wrestle Kingdom, um, they take us from the locker room on one side of the stadium, have to drive us to the front of the building, the front of the stadium. So it's, it's pretty far. And then there's a big security door that you have to go in and it's vacuum sealed. So you can only go in, close the door, you feel the like that, wow. pops your ears, and then you go through because it's a stadium. Yeah. So we go through there and then there was a holding pin right before we go out to the, the opening of the stadium. And in that holding pin, there was Ibushi and Devitt. And I walked in suited up and they're looking at me like, why what's going on here and then I was like nothing I took my guns out of my pocket and slammed them on the table and they're just like this because they didn't know if they were real or not so I just took them and laid them on the table and they just both froze and I go oh don't worry we're gonna have a match today and they're just like Whoa, what's <laughs> going on I can only imagine yeah. what's running through their minds and uh I go no you guys are good don't worry about it so <laughs> then we went and we did the entrance and if anyone is familiar with Japan they have strict gun laws So if you notice my entrance during Wrestle Kingdom, I keep the guns pointed down because one of my biggest concerns was a misinterpretation from any of the law enforcement or security in the building if I aim them at anyone if they're going to draw their weapons because I've had weapons drawn on me before. So I want to make sure that I'm not doing that in a foreign country as I'm trying to get to the ring. So you can tell my guns are straight down the entire time I'm going there. So it was all very tactical but done professionally and that silent protest was to let them know all right, cool. This is how you want to do things. I'm going to show you how I do things. And the pride that was it. sticking to your guns throughout all of that, because that's mm-hmm. a lot to take in. Is that why you kept the suits? Uh, Well, the, the suit 
was more of a, I'm going out with a bang. And whether you love me or hate me, you're going to remember my ass. <laughs> it's that simple. So uh, that's exactly what happened. And then the popularity that came after that, I didn't even realize that the video game was coming out at that time. So when I did that, you can hear it on the Japanese commentary. They're putting it over like, oh, the, the hitman and the video game. And like they're putting it together almost as if it was done intentionally. Yeah. And I didn't do it intentionally. It just happened to work out that way. So just good timing. That's all it was. <laughs> and then, you know, just the popularity of the image itself. And wow. then my ad adaptations of that look throughout time. It just seems to be something that's that people seem to like. Well, it's interesting that you mentioned MVP there as well, because you mm -hmm. are two of the people I think of when I think of wrestlers who wear like those full body suits, because you mm -hmm. used to wear one of those. Yeah. But when it does come to the suits, I mean, do you have to get certain ones made for when you're in the ring? I mean, do they have to be different, or are you just uh, wh buy Which suit suits? are you, uh, what are you talking about? I the, mean, like I've suit seen, that I wear? Yeah. You mean like the coat and the shirt and tie Yeah, because I mean, that? sometimes you oh, do yeah, get I, in scraps. I'm, I mean, it's, no, 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 <laughs> it's I, pretty intense. There's there's some championship matches I've done, and these are yeah. these are real clothes. Okay, these, I didn't know are, if you had them specially made. No, some, or? some of them have been. Um, more recently, the, the newer stuff is just uh, different clothing. It's not necessarily true clothing. It's just uh, athletic clothing okay. that can be used in these uh, situations. But, uh, yeah, the originally it wasn't necessarily uh, anything altered. Although the, the championship match that from New Japan, you can see upon the entrance when I do my intro and I drop my knuckles to the ground and I get up, you can see I look at Devitt and I say something to him. And I looked at him and I go, my pants just ripped. <laughs> because the stitching that was in the, the crotch of the pants was so tight, yeah. when I dropped my butt to, to drop my knuckles to the floor, I squatted and it ripped right up the middle. Oh. And the, the problem is that I look at him and I go, well, my pants just ripped. And he's looking at me like, what did you just say? And we ain't got no time to talk. We got to go. So we just ended up going in the match. And there's only one part where you can actually see, see a little bit of my, th my, my thigh in it. But that's, that's all. Because I wore black underneath to make sure I covered everything. <laughs> so, you know, out of, out of all things, yeah, you know, after, after a while, I had to learn to get wow. some stuff that would work for that. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, because those mm -hmm. aren't made to, you no. know, <laughs> no, roll around went, in. And yeah, that's crazy. Even when crazy. I went back to, to Impact last year. Mm -hmm. Uh, when I when I won the X Division match, that was that was all straight clothing. That was no alterations to it. And uh, when I got to the back, even they were like, "How the hell are you right, able to move impressive. around in that stuff?" And I go, <laughs> "Well, you kind of learn what you can and can't mm -hmm. do over time. So you gotta you gotta learn fast to, wow. to see how to get around that stuff." Well, here on the site, we not only yeah. interview wrestlers, but also musicians. Mm -hmm. So for you, I know I've seen a lot of mentioning in some Tupac quotes uh, throughout your yes, Instagram. But I was curious if you could have any artist write you some entrance music, which would that be? It would probably be Pac. Would it? Yeah. Okay. Because there's more sincerity behind what he says, um, less fear, uh, more in your face. But it, it's more, just more sincerity, more authenticity. Um, no knock to Biggie, because I'm from Brooklyn, and everybody loves Biggie, but... Pac was much more, you can see that there was much more of his mother's upbringing in there. There was more, most certainly that, that softer side to him. And I grew up all around girls. My dad was in the military, so he was always on leave. Uh, so I grew up all around my aunts, my sisters, cousins, all of that. And I had all girls around me. So I could understand that, that vibe that he was giving off. Yeah, he can be hard. He can be one of the hardest around. But that softer side is what got everybody closer. And because that was there, the sincerity behind it was able to be seen. And that's something that is very, uh, that's missing nowadays. And because everyone is looking for a quick buck, everybody's looking for that, that quick ride to fame. Yeah. Um, the, the easiest way to do it is to be authentic. Because there's just, there's nothing. It speaks to people. Yeah, it, it just, it connects much more deeply with people. And when people feel like you're putting on a show or there's something insincere, that disconnection can be incredibly powerful. And you may not have a chance to, to reconnect with them. And, you know, with music, mu music is such a powerful tool. I would think something like something from Pac would probably be more up my alley. Speaking of which, when I was in Ring of Honor and I was a part of the Rottweilers, my intro was the Realist Killers, which was a combination of Tupac and 50 Cent. So, I mean, it seems to lend itself <laughs> over time. Pretty badass, I have yeah. to say. Well, thank you. You're very welcome. And for you in wrestling, who do mm -hmm. you think has the coolest entrance as far as music goes? The coolest entrance? Wow. See, this is a new day and age, too, because there's way more, uh, there's way more opportunity to have cool entrances. And 
just way more things to include. Mm -hmm. Like one of the most recent ones that I had seen, I love her to death because we were in FCW together, was uh, uh, Fatou's wife. Um, that she has all the colors. Trinity. Trinity. Oh, yeah. Trinity. We were in uh, FCW together, and I love her to death because she was just an awesome girl. Always came to work, great attitude, good natured. Um, but she worked her ass off. And then now, seeing all that color, she's taking something that fits and her so beautiful, crazy. so beautifully. And she's learning how to play with it and adapt it and make it something cool. On top of that, she's a, she's a really attractive woman, too. And she knows how to do it right. So, I mean, I, s stuff like that is what attracts me. Because it's, of course, we're showmen, showmen, showmen women, but there's a, there's a craft to this. So when you do it well, you can, you can really appreciate it. When you see people that you like and they're doing well and you know that they've, they've gone through that journey and <laughs> you know where they've been and you know they've eaten a lot of shit to get there, <laughs> you know, it's, it's very fulfilling to see that they're doing cool stuff like that. I like seeing people do well like that. Well, I like that we were talking about being organic and authenticity. And with her, there was this behind the scenes thing that was shot for mm. how she got that entrance. And it was all her idea. Mm -hmm. And I love seeing that it was actually able to come to life. And I think yes. that's why people love it so much. That's the reason why it connects so well, because it's an extension of her. When you get the sincerity coming from in here, that's a different ball game when you're out there. And I think that's a mistake that a lot of people have made over the past couple of generations of wrestling, which is they want that fast track to being a star in that ring, but they're losing themselves in the process. And you can't do that because there's too many companies around here that are willing to sacrifice your, your mental stability in order for them to make money. You end up, you're, you're left as a shell afterwards. Mm -hmm. And it's unfortunate, but it's the nature of power. These companies, usually the people who are in charge should never be in charge to begin with. And it's easy to see because you can see the lack of leadership by the quality of what's going on or the lack of organization of what's going on. Nothing that I'm saying is anything new. But if you sit back and watch, now you start pinpointing stuff. And it's not to insult anybody's intelligence, but there's been a lot of bad stuff that's going on in the culture of pro wrestling for such a long time. I've been trying to change it for a long time. That's the reason why I'm always standing out because I don't go with the crowd. I never do. Everyone's going this way. I'm going this way. And that's how Kettner taught me. Yeah. And I still apply. There's, I would sit and speak to him for hours. I used to work at the Office of Special Narcotics in New York. And I would sit there on the phone, even though I'm supposed to be working. I would be <laughs> talking to him for like two, three hours. And I'm taking notes. I'm talking about all kinds of stuff. Just asking questions. And to this day, there's still stuff that he has told me from 1999, 1998, around there. Still applies. Still use it. That's crazy. Mm-hmm. You talk about like picking someone's brain for a long time. After hearing you talk out there and hearing you here, it's like, <laughs> I just want to keep asking you questions. But we have a show happening tonight as you oh, are okay, main yeah. eventing uh, against uh, Josh Alexander yes. soon at uh, Destiny yes. Wrestling. So just to wrap things up, I want to leave it with the fans. Is there anything, right. anything you would like to say? If you're a fan of pro wrestling, demand the best out of your people. Because these men and women are far more skilled than they let on. And unfortunately, a lot of the times it's because of the environments that they are in. It doesn't mean berate them, but demand more out of them because this can be really done uh, exceptionally well if the effort is a very strong collective effort from everyone who's associated with it. And not only will they benefit, but you as fans will benefit too because the quality of what you see will keep going up. And when the quality goes up, you're going to have more fun. I want to say thank you so much for joining us today. It was an absolute pleasure having you pleasure. on. So thank you so thank much. You. And remember to everybody viewing, you visit us at alicia2.com for all exclusive interviews and features. See you next time.